Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya al mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'een. Firstly, I'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity to benefit from this great program. I'd like to thank Ikna and the organizers and all the volunteers that are working behind the scenes to bring this program to us. And I'd like to thank all of the participants um, for watching and inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to benefit from what we are experiencing today. So inshallah the first question will be for Imam Siraj. So our president, um, Brother Javed, explained the mission of Ikna uh, at yes. the community level, at the individual level, at the society level. And this is really a platform. Ikna is really a platform for all of the believers really to uh, contribute to the deen and for us really to, to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether that be with our time, uh, whether that be with uh, our wealth. So your presentation, Imam Siraj, was on the topic of charity. So can you give us a few words of motivation and maybe you can do a, a little appeal, inshallah, to encourage us, how should we be going about motivating ourselves especially in this time where we've got a lot of financial questions, a lot of financial instability. We don't know what our cash flow is going to be over the coming weeks and months. How can we really motivate ourselves so that we can really strive to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our wealth? You know, Alhamdulillah, Allah is great. All you have to do is what you can do. The Prophet wasalam, said, Italatu fil jannah. I looked in Jannah. And I saw that the majority of the inhabitants were the poor people. In one narration that um, poor people entered Jannah 500 years before the rich people. Can I, can I make a confession? Um, Sheikh Umar made a difference. By the way, by the way, Umar, Sheikh Umar, I love him. I love him in ways that you can imagine. I have to say it uh, publicly. Uh, because I love him. So I'm going to say something. He may have a different opinion. I'm going to be honest with you. I love flying first class. I do. You know, you're the first one. You go through security. The first one on the plane. The first one off the plane. You're the first one to get your luggage, right? So I love that. But in Yomotayama, it's interesting that the poor people in general were into gender before the rich people. So what do you have to give? I mentioned about this man who gave water to a dog. You know, there's the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, you know, save yourselves from the fire even with half a date. So it's not how much money you have. Here's a woman who comes to Aisha radiallahu anha. She has nothing. She 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 needs she wants some food. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she give her she give her three dates and she has two babies, two young babies. And so this woman she gives one date to one of the children, uh, one of the child, and the other one, the other child. So two dates are gone. So the mother, she takes the date, the last one for herself, and she puts it to her mouth. And by the time she put the date to her mouth, her two uh, children, you know, they put their hands out. So she split the date in half and gave one half to, to one, one half to the other. Aisha radiallahu an, she explained that to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon um, him. And he said that because of that, that that mother gave to her daughters, the little girls, the babies, Allah gave her Jannah and forgave her sins. So not how much you have. And some of us have been blessed with tremendous amounts of wealth. There's some people right now, I know they lost their jobs. Many people, they lost their jobs. And we have to find a way to help them. Uh, as human beings, we have to do everything we can to help them make sure they have food for their family. So whatever you have, you have to give it. And then there's some of us, Allah is blessed with really good income, and we should take the time to spend it. Uh, I wanna I wanna give you, I wanna read something for you. Um, um, I, I study like some of the richest people in the world. You know, we have the, um, I think they called it the for, Fortune 500 or 400 or something like that, but the richest Americans. And let me read this for you, and I think it take a minute, but I, I, I think it emphasizes my, my, my point. Um, these five people, all of them are the, of, the, of the 500 richest Americans. 
one of and all of them died the last year. Alexander Spanos, he died. Look how much money he had left. Two billion four hundred million dollars. Robert McNair, he died the last year. Money did he have left? Three billion eight hundred million dollars. H. Ross Perot died in the last year. How much did he leave behind? Four billion two hundred million dollars. Paul Allen, he died within the last year. How much did he leave behind? Twenty six billion three hundred million dollars. And finally, David Koch. How much money he left behind? How much wealth he had he left behind? Fifty three billion five hundred million dollars. I don't think any of us are like that. But the point is, what's the point? If you leave all of that money behind, you say, oh, they left it to their family, that's great. Okay, fine, you left it to your family, fine. But what you're doing in analogy of football, you're punting an opportunity for you to do good, you're punting it to someone else. At the very least, you're, you're allowing someone else to do something with that money. But what if we take some of that money and give it to uh, uh, to Igna. Igna needs money right now. And Brother and sister, I'm telling you right now, you have to get up right now and and, and, and pay some money to Igna. If you are one of the ones who's fortunate, you still got a job or you still got income, you got a, you know, a big savings account, now is the time to do it. Don't wait another day. Go today. Go make contributions to Igna today. Ikna needs the money. You know when we have conferences, we have we have conferences where we raise money, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars. So you can't say now, you know, Sheikh Umar was right. Ula Suleiman, Umar Suleiman was right. You know what? Ain't nobody watching you right now. You know, you raise your hand, nobody see you. Allah see you. Allah knows how much money you have in your account because Allah gave it to us. There's nothing that we have except that Allah has given to us. So please, brothers and sisters, Whatever you have, according to your ability, Allah sees it. You go and you make a contribution to Ikna, and you make it now. You make it to today. Jazakallah, Karim Mam Siraj. So please do try to make your donations. Go to ikna.org slash donate. Uh, or call us on 877-363-IGNA. Uh, please try to do it as Imam Siraj said today before um, you know, we procrastinate, inshallah. Inshallah, the next question is for um, Imam uh, Umar Suleiman. So as um, um, Brother Javed mentioned when he talked about the vision of IGNA and the different projects that we're involved in, Dawa is one of them. And especially in these times and the verse that you discussed about the importance on calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and supplicating in these times, this is really a very important reminder for us that we need to become closer to Allah. But what about those people who are becoming further and further away from uh, Islam? And the specific question was referring to the LGBT groups but it can refer really to anybody who is moving closer and closer away from Islam, who doesn't have that spirituality, who hasn't yet discovered Islam. Is Dawah really a priority in the current time when we've got 2,000 deaths or so per, per day happening? The Muslims are becoming closer to Allah, we're supposed to be. Um, what reminder should there be for us to be engaged more in Dawah and how do we approach it? So I think that right now, in particular, people are actually thinking a lot about purpose. And by the way, do I get to say I love you too to Imam Salah? Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. I miss you and um, and love you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always love you and, and shower you in his mercy and tranquility and his riba, his pleasure, and reward you for all that you do to lead us and inspire us. Allahumma ameen. Um, so I think right now, um, and, and I'm going I'm to actually, uh, since, since you mentioned that, Imam Salah sent me a text uh, a few days after the pandemic. I hope you don't mind me exposing the text, Sheikh. Uh, I hope you're good. Can you give me a thumbs up, Imam? I see you. So, are we... All right, alhamdulillah. <laughs> About this idea of um, 
you know, sort of some sort of some sort of day of prayer, uh, dua, and and I think that um, it's something that we still have to think about, inshallah, how to frame it just with everything that's been going on, um, because obviously sometimes prayer is used as an escape uh, mechanism by some, and, and that's not that's certainly not how we conceive of of tawakkul in our uh, deen at all. Uh, so I think it's something definitely be worked on, inshallah ta'ala, for us to move people towards. I think people are considering purpose, the greater sense of purpose now, uh, more than ever before. But look, every fitna is a time of, of test, and some people will get closer to Allah, some people will stagnate, and some people, unfortunately, will get further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to make us of the first category, mm -hmm. that get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because it, it is some people whose faith may have been very strong but but look you get tested in a very unique way sometimes so uh, just because you survived one test and you thrived in one test doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to struggle when another test comes your way and so for some people uh, this is different imam siraj would would remember subhanallah uh and, and in fact at that time of course i was with they relief i'm still with they relief but i was with they relief uh, uh, you know, uh, at the time, um, in, in a full-time capacity, in fact, in Hurricane Katrina, and Imam Siraj came down to Louisiana after after we were hit in New Orleans. SubhanAllah, it was 15 years ago. 15 years ago, SubhanAllah. Feels like, feels like not too long ago. But, um, you know, some people were, were in the masjid and losing their minds because what happened to my grocery store? What happened to, to my alcohol sales? What happened to my, my gold? You know, go back to my house and see if there's gold uh, in my destroyed house. I need my gold. I need my possessions. And some people really lost it. And then some people forever. They've been in the masjid since uh, these last 15 years. It really brought them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these times of intense test uh, can really change the game for people. Someone who was really far ahead can fall back, and someone that was really far behind can get ahead. And um, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu taught us not to be comfortable and complacent with our position. A person could be just a yard away, just a hand span away from Jannah, and do something of the people of Hellfire and end up being from the inhabitants of Hellfire. And a person could be on the other side, one of you know, on their way to Hellfire, and subhanAllah, something happens, and they do one of the actions of the people of Jannah and their, their fate is flipped. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya muqallib al qulub thabit qulubana ala deenik. Oh, turn your hearts, make our hearts firm on your path. Allahumma thabitna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm. Farzukhna uh, istiqama. All of these concepts of steadfastness, of firmness, of guidance uh, being constant. So I think now is the time for ourselves to reevaluate um, our own positions. And then obviously, how do we. Uh, not not exploit vulnerability. See, there's a difference between exploiting people's vulnerability and giving people context to their vulnerability. Everyone's feeling low and down, and and you can come in. So back to the Katrina example, just because I'm I'm remembering it right now. Subhanallah. Some of the you know some groups were coming with their Bible pamphlets, but there was no aid, and it was and it felt it felt cheap. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel like they were actually trying to help the people, and it rubbed the evacuees the wrong way. I'm talking about the Superdome and where the evacuees were crowded. And then some people, you know, uh, were coming in with the aid and they didn't have their scripture on their, uh, you know, in, in their hands, but it was in their actions and it made people think. And that's what Ikhna Relief does so beautifully, mashallah, tabarakallah. Going out right now, Ikhna Relief doesn't have, to, doesn't have to give people a Quran right now. Uh, they can just, they, they're acting it out. They're, they're living it right now in the streets of our cities. And that's making people think, like, what's, What's causing that person to go out with a smile on their face and put themselves at risk right now to help the elderly and the vulnerable? And it's that Muslims for humanity. It's, it's their deen, it's their Qur'an, it's their sunnah, their example in the sunnah of the Prophet And so the question about, you know, right now, uh, people are searching. A lot of people are going to be searching for, for purpose and meaning. And um, I didn't quite understand the first part of the question, but, uh, you know, about... about um, you know, particularly uh, when it comes to LGBT groups or things of that sort. But in general, with shahawat, with desires, sinful desires and, and shahawat and, and, and possessions uh, and things that are worldly and material or of that nature, uh, when the dunya shows its cracks like it is right now, then the desires become less worth it. Right? So a person, 
a person seeks deeper meaning, deeper purpose, and tries to overcome their 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 shahawat and their attachments and their connections. And so, in the in, in the greatest sense of the word, right now is a chance for people to uh, to really really shine in their connection and in, uh, in how they in how they live and how they seek and how they, they try to elevate and how they try to move closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think inshallah ta'ala, as we are doing that ourselves, bidnillahi ta'ala, we can inspire others also inshallah. So like I said, just like if you're thinking about those people in the streets with their relief t-shirts that are helping others uh, get through their moments of vulnerability, get through their moments of weakness, um, there's a spiritual component to that too. I want everyone to think about your coworkers. Think about your the people that you're on a regular basis. I want you to FaceTime them. And the tranquility and the serenity, serenity that you have through having the comprehension of faith will transfer over that too, inshallah ta'ala. People will be able to see. And it's not it's not false. It's not like you're you're just trying to, to, to display something. No, it's deeper meaning, deeper purpose, uh, and the you know that, that true understanding that the dunya has shown its cracks. And the Akhirah has shown its inevitability. And Allah's pleasure has once again shown its worth. And all of that has to come into play uh, with each other, inshallah ta'ala, for all of us on an individual level and on, on, on a collective, inshallah, to find that place. Um, inshallah, the next question is for Brother Jabe. So, mashallah, you shared the vision uh, of Ikna uh, at an individual level, family level, community, society level. But if somebody wants to really get involved, they, they want to be a vehicle for positive change. They want to be somebody who wants to be chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do the work of the deen. What's the next step for them? How do they become part of this organization? Well, what's the process? It's actually very simple, honestly. Um, so first of all, just look for if, if you live in an area or in a city or a town where there's already an ICNA chapter, uh, please reach out to them. Uh, you can do that through the website uh, on the contact us section. You can send us an email. Uh, but I'm sure you probably know someone or has contact with someone and we can put you in contact with that. So the very first thing, brothers and sisters, my point is always going to be is if you have a desire to change, if you have a desire to really connect for this higher purpose, you can easily take up a lot of steps in order to be able to develop as a human being, as a person, and start looking around you to see how can I, and again, ikna is one of the vehicles. Ikna is not the goal. Ikna is a, a way to, to do this, this process. So we invite you, I mean, connect with us uh, uh, in the city. If there's a chapter, please call us, ask us, and uh, if there's helping hand or even a relief uh, is going on, please connect to them, and inshallah, you'll be able to connect to us. So that's happening throughout the country. Alhamdulillah, Ikna has over 40 uh, chapters. If there is nothing in your city, uh, we can easily, inshallah, talk to you how to set up uh, maybe a small neighbor net in your area to start this uh, effort of uh, learning and uh, studying with each other uh, to be able to attract more people. A small setup uh, in a masjid, in your house, wherever you, you feel comfortable. And very gradually, you can, inshallah, build up upon that. Because the, at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, the idea is to become better and better every single day. The Prophet reminds us and has told us that, you know, our goal should be that every single day that we wake up, that we have improved in one way or the other compared to the, to, to the day before. So it's it's a process and it's a journey. And uh, inshallah, we are here to help and support you. And before I conclude, I just wanted to say this uh, very specifically. Brothers and sisters, I really, really honestly want to take a moment and thank our scholars and our shiuch, our imams, for the service they do. Why you have no idea how much time that they really give. I was listening to the lectures and the presentations. At, at a short notice, they're able to uh, you know, adjust their schedules. Yes, we are all at home, but believe me, and I know this for a fact, that these uh, shiuch and imams, our scholars are probably 
you know, 10 times busier now than before. Um, I, I can tell, I can see it in their voice. I can, I can tell by their, uh, but how, how they're really engaged. It's not an easy thing. And it's just, you know, just preparing for uh, one session or two and almost everyone right now, all massages that are being closed right now, all organizations, everyone is at home. So just imagine the level of burden, the level of uh, pressure that they actually have. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for that, inshallah ta'ala, for you and your and your families, inshallah ta'ala. So, uh, but inshallah, keep, so keep keep them all in your dua and keep them, uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep them safe, inshallah. Jazakallah, Kara. So this really brings us to the conclusion of this session. I'd like to really thank uh, really three excellent speakers in this session. Uh, MashaAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you on the path to choose you to do the work of the deen and for the community in America and beyond really to benefit from uh, what we've learned today, inshallah. So with that, um, we will move, inshallah, to conclude this session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfirullah wa atubu alayh.